<laughs> Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our 36 hour straight hangout a thon. Um, this is a little bit weird because we're used to talking to other people in Windows, but we're here next to each other. Yay! <laughs> and, and so we're here instead talking to you out there, and we're really hoping that you'll talk back. So among the different things that we have going on, um, you can ask us questions via the Q&A app. Uh, we are following Twitter with the hashtag Hangoutathon. Um, and heck, if you at tweet us, we'll notice. Um, and I'm going to be turning on a comment tracker, which sort of kind of maybe works when it feels like it. So if you want to leave us messages, really the best thing for you to do is to use the Q&A app. I can already see, uh, Hi, Nancy. yes, our dear friend Nancy Graziano is saying good morning, everyone, and good morning and thank you for joining us. So for those of you who don't know what you just turned tuned into, uh, Nicole and I are two of the very huge group of people that makes CosmoQuest.org happen. CosmoQuest isn't a company, it's not a nonprofit, it's an idea that has been drawn together into a partnership of many different organizations. The lead organization is Southern Illinois University Edwardsville, which is where the two of us work, and I need to look at the camera, not at the center of this window. Um, and the, the money that we're working to raise um, during this 36-hour period and then during the 36 days to follow that we're kicking off in our 3636 fundraiser um, is going to go to support the team at Southern Illinois University. We're the ones who, Joe is hanging just off campus. Joe, can you, camera, just off camera. It's 10 a.m. <laughs> You're saying hi. Yep, hi. <laughs> <laughs> So Joe is our HTML5 ninja. He's the one that makes sure that uh, anything that's supposed to change, move, do something when you click on it actually does that. He's the reason that we have a citizen science interface. Um, it should be into the site. You want to check? I just did. I got a stock video that you made. Change the URL and index. So Joe is actually going to be programming on the live site live. Um, take. Okay. Um, we're going to work to make sure that this hangout is on the homepage of CosmoQuest for the entirety of the weekend. So if you go to CosmoQuest.org, you can do science, you can watch videos, preferably in two different windows, because we don't have it set so you can do both at once. The chaos that you're witnessing right now is um, we have behind us this monitor that is currently advertising things. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is, I stole the Apple TV from downstairs, carried it up to allow us to do things like, while they're working, I'm going to go ahead, connect to the Apple TV, and I can mm -hmm. send over to it. Um, our website. So this the, is what Lindsay's trying to do with my computer over on this side, and it's not failing. <laughs> so, um, the idea that it would be hard to send something to an Apple TV hadn't occurred to me. <laughs> so this is what you deal with occasionally when you deal with me. Is is technology just seems laptop. easy? So, yeah, I think this laptop uh, was 2009. Okay, so we may be marking craters on my laptop. Oh, just plug into the lower one yeah, with the cable. I have a dumb, the dumb one right now. So we have two monitors set up behind us, and the reason that we're doing this um, is last year, this is our second year of, of doing a Hangout-a-thon, and I promise I'll go to normal programming in a moment. First, I'm just going to explain the chaos that is here. Um, last year, we were in the exact same physical space in my house, um, but we got a lot of comments that, the show looked rather like we were filming Wayne's World. Uh, we were filming on a blue futon that is up here in my attic. Um, we had stuffed animals and pillows all around us. We were happy, we were comfortable, we were slouchy. Uh, rather than cha channeling Wayne and Garth, we decided um, 
that we would pillage other furniture from the rest of my house. So the Chinese screens that you see behind us. This is cut Yes. Um, the, the Chinese screens that you see behind us, um, those get used when I have guests spending the night and they get stuck over the dormers so that I can turn what is otherwise a completely open attic into smaller rooms for privacy because I like my friends. That happens here. Um, one of the ways that we work to try and save money is a collaboration is my husband and I have been lucky enough to be able to afford a house, mostly because my husband's a computer scientist. <laughs> <laughs> what is this voodoo? I don't understand. <laughs> and um, so when we have collaborators visit from all around the world, they actually stay at my house. Uh, we're doing everything we can to be able to produce science at a low cost, and that means slumber parties in Pamela's attic. Um, we stole a bookcase from behind my desk, and my favorite bit of set design is I sent Tiny Intern, who's currently hiding behind Nicole, um, and told her to find whatever she wanted in our house that she thought would look cool on set. She was born in 1994 and does not realize she found the worst science fiction movie TV show ever made. Battlestar Galactica 1980, which forever holds a soft place in my heart. She found Battlestar Galactica 1980 and used it in the set design. Don't you love me? Yes, we do love you. Um, so, so that's a little bit of a story about how we ended up with a set. I stole my microphone from Astronomy Cast. And you put your hand on it. Yeah. Go, ah. Sorry. <laughs> this is my bedroom television set. This is the monitor for my computer. Uh, we basically raided my house and turned it into a set. Where can I find the cord for my We need VGA. Is there one already? Oh, Joe out? had it yesterday. Joe. The TV? Yeah. It should be plugged in. I need it plugged into Nicole's computer. Is there a VGA cord coming out? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to 10, 11 in the morning. Um, so, so I'm going to look at the comments while they look at the chaos. So we have from Paul Hutchinson, good afternoon and good luck from the UK. From Paul Stewart, good morning from New Zealand. From Rachel Fry, whoa, the set looks great. Yay! That's all tiny intern. Um, <laughs> Red Five standing by from Chris Miller. Uh, <laughs> Richard's pointing out, Joe, you'll need a new URL every four hours, and we need to update the C CQ page then, too. It's eight hours now. Yeah, so, so we're actually, one of the things to let all of you in is if you choose to stay with us for the entirety of the Hangout, which we hope you'll do as we kill stuffed animals. <laughs> I'm going to wear a seat belt, apparently, made of a VJ. <laughs> um, so we have a, we we have achieved illumination. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see that, <laughs> but I uh, yeah, I like my little pony. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna switch cameras so that they can see that oh, okay. better. So, so in designing our set, I'm going to continue to gloat about our set for a moment because I'm stupidly proud of it. <laughs> we have multiple cameras, so I'm going to switch to this is our only two of us are on set at once setup. So um, only one of us is on set at once, rather. So this is setup number two for one person because I like irony. Um, and then we also have we also have a camera I turned off, let me turn it back on, that is our wireless camera. Apparently it needs to attach itself to the network before it will work. So let me switch back to the regular one. Um, anyways, we're wired a lot and during the next 36 hours we're going to take advantage of all of these different cameras all of the different people in our community to bring you all sorts of awesome. Um, personifying all of this is Tiny Intern's t-shirt, which I'm going to ask her to come share. Where do I stand? Right in the middle. 
<laughs> that, that is what we're going for this weekend. Okay, you, you can. Thank you. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so your donations are literally what's going to fund Tiny Intern. So, no, yeah, I'm, I'm looking to see what's on the screen. Okay, so now, now to go back into our regular programming while things are looking to settle out. Um, this, this first 45 minute block we have set aside to try and explain to you a little bit about what CosmoQuest is. Um, for those of you who are new, for those of you who don't know, we are the crazy creation of Fraser Kane and myself sitting in the Marriott Marquis in Atlanta, Georgia after Dragon Con in 2011. Um, Fraser and I had been having this argument for several years. I, I was at the time working with the Zooniverse collaboration and Fraser kept asking me why is it that you're not giving the public all the different things that you researchers have? Why aren't you providing the public with seminars? You're asking us to do science. Why aren't you providing us star parties? Why aren't you? Why aren't you? And it all boiled down to citizen science often asks the public to do all the same tasks that we ask our students to do, that we ask our grad students, our postdocs, our colleagues to do. So if we're asking them to do the work, why aren't we giving them the privileges? Why aren't we giving them the content and the information? And up until then, my argument had always been, we're trying. It just takes time and it takes money and it's hard because grant timelines and everything else. But this particular 2011 Dragon Con was after Google Hangouts on Air had begun to exist. And Fraser came back at me with the, so uh, yeah, this Hangouts thing, use that. And I sort of went, yeah. And we called over our waitress and we got beer because beer. And we, we also asked her for one of her waitress slips. So CosmoQuest was not conceived on the back of a napkin. It was conceived on the back of a uh, waitress's order book. And we started figuring out, OK, so we have WordPress. We know how to write citizen science software. Um, we have Google Hangouts on air. What are all the things that a professional research facility would have if it was an ideal research facility? And this is the other thing. Nicole and I are at a small state university, and this is by choice. We both have the type of pedigrees. She went to the University of Virginia, which completely rejected me. <laughs> I went to the University of Texas. These are both top universities. And I, I was working at Harvard before I came to SIUE. And the reason I came to SIUE is because I wanted to work with students like Joe, who can do amazing creative things, but due to family, due to just not thinking about applying, due to a whole variety of different reasons, it sometimes even boils down to um, doesn't have teachers that know how to write recommendations for top universities. There are a lot of really amazing students at small universities that you wouldn't think of. Well, I went to a very small liberal arts college for my undergrad, and that had uh, quite an experience on me because <clears throat> even though it wasn't a top university, even though it wasn't, even though we weren't doing stellar research, I got experiences that I would not have gotten at a large research university. I was designing. Uh, courses and, and degree programs as a senior undergrad and that kind of thing um, and publishing in a space encyclopedia. I don't know if I told you that one. No. <laughs> because my professor was one of the editors. And That's awesome. I was able to submit. So yeah, so you get a different set of experiences in a school like this. So, so I reached the point one day where, where I kid you not, I, I was working with students at both Harvard and MIT and while I was at MIT, I I, I heard students talking about, I can't date him. He uses Windows. Um, yeah. <laughs> Joe's <laughs> providing commentary in the corner. And I was like, this, this is such a weird environment. I love it. I love MIT. But it's a weird environment. And, and then I heard one girl saying to another at Harvard, oh my god, can you believe she wasn't even wearing real Prada? And, and I realized that the priorities that I grew up with at 
a public high school, at a public college. Um, the worries about how am I going to pay my tuition next month, they're all still there, but they're completely different. And I wanted to go find some place with the students like Nicole was when she was an undergrad, like Joe, like I was when I was an undergrad. And when I was offered a chance to come to SIUE, I came. Now, we're here and we're trying to provide other students, other high school students, interns, people who are still trying to figure out who they want to be when they're finished incubating in college. Um, tiny intern who just ran that way. She's a 19-year-old who, working with CosmoQuest, is getting the chance to play on a global perspective while helping you have access to science. So when you donate money, um, the money from this Hangout-a-thon is getting earmarked to pay tiny intern to do graphics and things like that for our website, to pay Joe's salary, to pay Corey's salary, to pay a small amount of my salary. And once that's taken care of, Nicole, who's on a grant and is safe until December, then we're going to start working on Nicole so that she can have a job past December <laughs> um, and funding all of our educational activities and later today I'm going to be posting all of our reach goals on the website. So right now we're working on 36 hours of intensive fundraising and then we're going into a 32 day, Six day. 36 day, Does that mean that I counted properly on the calendar? <laughs> a 36 day um, extended fundraising. Um, we'd love to use Indiegogo, we'd love to use Kickstarter, we know you're going to say why aren't you using Indiegogo and Kickstarter, and here's where the bad side about working in a public university comes from. We're in the state of Illinois, and for those of you who aren't aware, five of our last seven governors are currently in jail. <laughs> and one of the side effects of this is, uh, we're held under extra accountability for the type for the fundraising and for money usage, and so things are scrutinized very carefully, which is a good thing, but it also restricts some of what we can do using a lot of new technologies and new media. And the the restrictions that you face can be some things as simple as Patreon, for instance, says if there's any legal issues, they have to be tried in the court of law in California and we have to try them in the state of Illinois since we work for the state of Illinois. So, so we hit all sorts of crazy, weird, why we can't use modern tools. But we can use PayPal. And you can make donations that are completely tax deductible. And so we'd ask you to give. Now, let's tell you a little bit about what we have to give to. So for instance, we were able to hire Nicole because of our guerrilla science grant, because stormtroopers need to learn science too. Thank you, NASA. <laughs> you want to tell them about guerrilla science? Sure. So, so guerrilla science, it's not guerrilla as the ape, it's, it's guerrilla as in the surprise. Um, we go to different uh, public conventions, um, sci fi conventions, uh, maker fairs, uh, community events. We, I mean, community events in town are free. I go to as many of those as possible. Uh, and hit people with science where they maybe weren't expecting it. And so we take the CosmoQuest Citizen Science booth, experience, website, materials, freebies, anything that we can bring to these events, things like Dragon Con. Um, go, we're going to Balticon in a month. We have, uh, I'll be in Convergence at Convergence this year. Uh, sadly, we are not at the DC Science Festival right now. We are watching everyone else tweet from it, so I hope you're having a good time. Um, and, and and anything as small as uh, we had like a little family science expo here in Edwardsville at the library, and so I, I brought our stuff there. Um, so we can <clears throat> bring science to where people are, where they may not necessarily be expecting it, and get them involved in the process of doing real research with massive data. So we have a question coming in from Nancy. She's asking, um, is there a spot where we can monitor the amount raised so far? Yes. yes. If you go to cosmoquest.org slash hangoutathon, which should be the URL appearing beneath our video. You got it. Oh. oh, I made the, the link too long. Let me make that. This is what Joe was trying to I thought he was pointing at something else. Yeah. OK. Yeah, yeah. The, the lower third. Um, I should send you a better logo, too. Okay. Um, there you go. So if you go to that URL, 
<laughs> We're going to be squinting a lot trying to read the monitor. <laughs> so if you go to that URL, you can monitor how much has given, been given so far. And you can also see the companies that have pledged to give, but their numbers aren't yet showing up in the totals because they're sending us checks. Thank you, companies. Or in one case, uh, they're sending us coffee. So, so we we have been lucky enough um, to to have a coffee sponsor, um, and well, later last year's coffee sponsor as well. Yes. So, making sure I get the name entirely right. And Hank, um, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Scary looking error. Yeah, so you have to spell hangoutathon with a uh, lowercase h or it borks in fascinating and terrifying ways. Um, so, so we have uh, Weevil's Evil Bean Brew from Pennsylvania, USA is providing us our coffee this weekend. Um, and we have several different companies, including Empty Set Entertainment, which is home of Scott Sigler and uh, A. Kovacs. Uh, they have made a pledge uh, later on in this weekend. We are going to be uh, having $1,000 in donations matched by them. Um, Fancy Farms. Um, has pledged a donation. Revolution EHR has pledged a donation. Fancy Farmers are two rides her horse. And yes. I rode a horse for the first time really badly. <laughs> <laughs> um, and where Tiny Intern rides horses on a regular basis. Um, so, so you now know how we work out our stress. Um, our new office is in the fitness center. That's where I go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I don't. <laughs> Can I send you the logo file? That's the easiest way to get you. Uh, just drop it to me across Skype. Okay. Um, actually, it needs to land on that computer. Yes. Uh, <laughs> hi, Internet. Um, drop it... Yeah, drop it to me across Skype, and I'll drop box it up there. Um, so, so all train of thought has been lost. Sorry, so we do. I'm going to fix the logo. We we <laughs> do we do Carilla Citizen Science, um, and and then in designing CosmoQuest, um, I'm going to take you on a brief tour of all the different things that we have to offer, and I'm going to switch cameras while I do this so that hopefully you can get a better view of the monitor screen. I have no clue how well this is going to work. We got very high tech and one of our cameras I can actually adjust. It makes me very happy. Um, so to go along with you, we have First of all, you go to our homepage, and the first thing you hit is this nice big button that says Do Science. Let me see if I can zoom in more on this. Nope. Okay. So we have a big yellow button that says Do Science. Play along at home. Go to CosmoQuest.org. <laughs> yes. Um, we currently have three different citizen science projects that we're going to go visit in a few more minutes and show you how they work. Um, but, but research centers aren't just about the doing the science. There's also, um, well, we provide through our Hangouts everything from uh, a chance to learn about, well, in this case, how to do interesting science demos. We provide educational opportunities for educators, which includes professors, includes teachers, includes anyone who works with other humans and wants to inflict science on other humans. Um, so we have Learning Space, which Nicole hosts every week. And Georgia. And Georgia. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's the, um, we have some trailers up for our Hangouts, uh, and that is uh, an unfortunate screen share, screenshot of the trailer of the Learning Space Hangout. But that was a particularly fun one because we did lots of hands-on science demos in the STEM Resource Center which is the department where we live at SIUE. Uh, but on that page there for Hangouts, uh, whenever we have a live Hangout running, that's the place where you can see it. 
uh, playing? Um, so besides that, we also have, um, so that's the one that we have hosted up here. Um, so we also do every Friday a weekly space hangout, which um, is our version of a journal club, except it's put together for you. So with the weekly space hangout, the way it works is, let me see if I can get both of us in this zoomed in monitor. Okay, so if you lean in. I'm doing things. Okay, <laughs> when you lean in. Um, so so uh, with our weekly space hangout, this is our version of a journal club. It is produced by our collaborator, Fraser Kane, publisher of Universe Today, which has been a huge friend of CosmoQuest. Um, and it's organized by Susie Murph, who we couldn't function without because she helps us out with Astronomy Cast and so many other things. And what they do is bring together as many journalists and science communicators as they can every Friday to talk about what's new in the world of astronomy, to talk about the latest journal articles, to talk about the latest press releases. And so this plays that role of the weekly journal club that you'd often see in, in a research center where you talk about what is the coolest paper that everyone needs to read in ArchiveX. We're just recontextualizing everything um, so that it, it is more consumable for you. So beyond the weekly space hangout, we also every Sunday night do the virtual star party. That's again hosted by Fraser Kane. Um, Mondays, Fraser and I do uh, astronomy cast where we're working really hard to try and provide you an audio encyclopedia of everything um, that we find interesting about astronomy. And this is actually part of how Nicole and I met. Yes, yeah, so they started astronomy cast around the time I was a first year grad student. And I was uh, studying for qualifying exams, which was an experience. Um, and I would listen to astronomy casts in my off time because I felt like it was kind of like studying light. Because <laughs> they were talking about the topics that were going to be covered in the exam, because it covered all of all of undergrad astronomy, everything you should know for your master's level test that I was taking. Um, so I would listen to that, and that's how I became a fan of Pamela's, and eventually got to meet her at DragonCon of all places, and was all like, oh, I'm a fan. I want to be your fan. <laughs> And I said, no, you really don't want to, because there's too many sleepless nights involved, <laughs> such as tonight. tonight. Um, your bedtime schedule before mine, so I don't want to hear it. Yeah, but you get a longer chunk of consecutive sleep. Um, so, so this year we're not both going to try and stay awake for 36 hours. We learned our lesson last year. Apparently I fell asleep on camera. I totally forgot about that part. I did not. <laughs> Uh, so, so with Astronomy Cast, we're trying to provide that chance for anyone who wants to learn astronomy to learn astronomy while they're folding their laundry. Um, there's so many things that we do every day that don't really use up that much of our brain, that free us to listen. And I, I'm a huge fan of audiobooks, patio books. Um, I know that the reason I'm able to regularly consume new ideas is because other people have taken the time to read them out loud, to speak them out loud. And so with Astronomy Cast and all the other things we do, we strip out the audio and we put it out in podcast form. So the Weekly Space Hangout has its own podcast, Astronomy Cast does, and all the rest of the audio goes out in our 365 Days of Astronomy podcast. Uh, the virtual star party, that loses something. That one doesn't. <laughs> that one does not. Um, but all of the video, because we record all of this live, um, all of the video goes out on our YouTube channel, which is hosted by our partner, Astrosphere Vids. Um, so you're going to hear the word partner a lot. You can also catch all of our audio on one of our dear collaborators, dear friends, astronomy.fm. So we work with a whole network of different people to, to try and, and get you science in all the different ways so that you can learn the science. So, so we have you doing science through our citizen science projects. We have you learning science through all of our media. Um, but it's not just about the media, finding mouse. There's certain phrases you're going to hear a lot. Other computer. Other computer. 
<laughs> Other computer is one of them. Finding mouse is one of them. Which camera are we using is one of them. And I apologize in advance for the various chaos that will occur as we get progressively more and more sleep deprived. What do you guys say during astronomy class? We're making the sausage. Yeah, you guys get to watch us making the sausage. Um, so in addition to all of our regular star parties, all of our regular astronomy casts, all of our regular weekly space hangouts, some of the other things that we do is we partner with other organizations because we've built up the skills on how to use the, the Google Hangouts on air. Thank you, Google. We love you, Google. I'll switch to a better camera now. Um, so, so we partner with the Google Lunar X Prize program to um, help them share what all of their wonderful teams are doing. So we've been producing, we've I think done two or three at this point, Google Lunar X Prize Hangouts. Three. three. Okay, we are working with the Astronomers Without Borders Astro Art Program to, well, do things like help them bounce images off the moon to take your photographs and turn them into art that the cosmos is deciding how to design and that's just kind of awesome. Um, we are uh, also hosting special events. Um, I've been told I'm being too quiet! <laughs> we're sorry for whatever we just did to your eardrums. <laughs> is that better? Let me know. <laughs> sorry, I just pulled up the comments. <laughs> Let me know. <laughs> um, yeah, so I should bring Q&A back up. Um, yeah, so it's not so much that we need to turn our levels up, we just need to change We're the using mic. The same mic. <laughs> yeah, no, so it's it's we both have a side that's active. If you're listening in stereo and this is actually going out in stereo, I'm on one side of your head. I'm on the other side of your head. So we're what? in can oh. you say in stereo with me? In with, stereo. Okay, that wasn't really <laughs> Okay, moving on. I don't take direction very well. Moving on. So, so in, in addition to all of the media that we're putting out that you can consume on YouTube, that you can consume on uh, iTunes, we are also working to put together a repository of planetarium shows. We're going to have the Youngstown State University team on uh, tomorrow morning, and we've produced... Uh, Cosmic Castaways, which is the first one we hope will be many different planetarium shows, and that will be a, an additional one of our reach goals this weekend. One of the things about planetariums is there are some of these centers, the Rose Center in New York City, the Charles Hayden Planetarium, the Boston Museum of Science, where I grew up, um, the Adler Planetarium, all of these extremely large museums with large endowments with very wealthy planetariums that have shows that cost tens of thousands, millions, huge sums of money. And they sell them to other shows and they charge admission. And then there's places like us that are blow-up planetariums. Nicole is our queen of the blow-up planetarium. Yes, we got an inflatable planetarium last year, which is so much fun. Uh, it's it's uh, We got the large version, of course, so you really have to have like a school gym for us to bring it. <laughs> and uh, we're bringing it out for an event next Wednesday, actually, to a local high school, um, where we will have uh, bring the night sky inside, do a planetarium show during the day. Uh, we can bring it wherever we want. And, and we can't exactly afford to buy multi-million dollar shows. But what we can do is we can partner with Youngstown State University and the Ward Beecher Planetarium. And we can find funding, uh, in some cases it feels like we're looking under rocks, to produce shows that we then give away for free. And this is what we did with Cosmic Castaways, is there, there was a grant that uh, John Feldmeyer was part of to study a variety of different things, including the stars that get torn out of galaxies during galaxy encounters. Galaxy on galaxy violence occurs, and the stars are the, the victims. And he had a grant to study those stars, and we used part of that grant to do public education in the form of creating a planetarium show that we are now giving away for free. And we want to do additional shows. We want to do a show on 
how citizen scientists have played such a huge role in asteroid science. And you're going to hear us talking about asteroid science over and over and over this weekend from when rocks hit Earth with meteorite man uh, Jeff Notkin. Uh, we're going to be talking about citizen science with Osiris Rex, with Hannah Tackery. We're going to be talking about mining uh, asteroids with some of the folks from Planetary Resources tomorrow afternoon. We want to do a planetarium show that tells the story of how these rocks go from getting discovered by amateurs to, well, mined by million, billion companies, companies with huge caches of money that are out to, well, push the mining industry off the surface of the planet to go mine somewhere else, which personally I'm a fan of. So we want to do new planetarium shows. That's part of what we do, and we're building an image repository. And then there's Educator Zone, and and this is where Nicole reigns queen. So you want to tell us about Educator Zone? I'm and our queen of a lot of things I didn't realize before. Yeah, my level is kind of low. Do you see the little green bit? What I know. Okay, so Educator Zone is the place you want to go if you are an educator of any kind. If you do formal education, if you're a teacher in the classroom, if you do informal education. Uh, with museums, with school groups, after school clubs, any of those, any any kind of education that you want to do. Uh, we pull in, really, we pull the expertise from the teachers on our team. So Georgia Bracey, who's been a fifth grade teacher, fifth grade? Yeah. Yeah, she was fifth grade teacher before. Uh, Kathy Costello and Ellen Riley, who between the two of them have like 8,000 years of teaching experience because they're just amazing. Um, <clears throat> and we are able to build and create uh, lesson plans that go along with the different citizen science projects so that you can bring these into the classroom and still hit the science standards that you need to hit for your classroom. We also do uh, lots of hands-on activities. This is something that I did a lot as a grad student at University of Virginia. We did hands-on activities with a group called Dark Skies Bright Kids. And so uh, I try and throw a few hands-on activities into our weekly learning space and have been uh, starting to blog about some of the different activities that we do. Hands-on activities are great for informal education, great for kids, great for adults. Uh, you can really bring the science of astronomy, which is something that is up to there and out of reach and out of, our, out of our range and bring it down to Earth and to people's individual experiences. I'm slightly distracted by the microphone. Yeah, if, if I can Tweet. get a grip, I'm going to... Ah. One moment, please. Technical difficulties. Yeah. Okay, I think that this will be much better. Say, tell us what you had for breakfast. The standard microphone check. I had your frosted mini wheats. <laughs> Actually, you ate my husband's. Or your husband's right. rusted mini wheats. <laughs> so, so if if folks could tell us if we fixed the microphone difficulties and if we both sound better. I'll tell you. <laughs> Joe's over in the corner. Um, it's on a minute delay in the part released. That's so. fine. Okay. Yeah. So in a minute, you can tell us if we sound okay. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> okay. So educator zone, place you want to go for our lesson plans, for the lesson plans we've developed with our partners, like the Cosmic Castaways crew. Um, and for blogs about fun activities that you can do. Uh, one of the, my favorite ones, because I got fed, was the cupcake geology that we did on Learning Space with Jess Krim. Um, that I think, uh, we're going to have to, oh gosh, it was so wonderful. Uh, she made these cupcakes, but made them with uh, different layers of colored cake, such that you could um, do a core sample of the cupcake. So you give the student the cupcake with the frosting and the wrapper, and they're not allowed to open it, and they don't know what's inside. And they do core samples with clear straws and actually can pull out the cake. Okay. What, what happened? So, so, hi, Victor. We're so happy to see you. Who's Victor? Hi, Victor. Victor is a two-year-old who keeps trying to introduce himself. <gasps> hi, Victor. <laughs> We're so glad you're with us, Victor. <laughs> <laughs> so that's uh, Alan Vers Versfeld. I'm, if you want us to pronounce your name correctly, please include pronunciation. If you want to cause me to look with like the wrinkly forehead at you and apologize, don't. And I'll amuse you with how I destroy the pronunciation of your name. She's still working on mine. It's fine. <sighs> <laughs> Phil, this is your cue. <laughs> so, uh, yes. Um, I'm monitoring all the places. Um, Yes, so we're, we're trying to keep an eye on the Q&A app, which, of course, rearranges comments uh, <laughs> in real time. Um, and uh, we have Twitter open. We have all the things. 
Um, so yeah, Educator Zone, check it out. And we have some more interesting educational materials coming in later in the broadcast. What? Okay, so so we're being told our microphone is just terrible. I'm going to switch microphones. Hold on. Let's, okay. Let's see if we can make this better. Um, dancing interlude. Okay, I can't click buttons and do a dancing interlude. That's why I'm doing time. it. Okay. <laughs> um, we're going to go to the conference cam microphone. Which one is it? Oh, it's in the base. Yeah. So okay. testing, testing, testing. Say something. I was going to say something not appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> Not doing, because we're live. We have a two-year-old watching. His name is Victor. Um, Victor. I don't know how you can say Victor without doing that. Victor, Victor. Um, okay, so let's mark some craters. Okay. I think we can do that. All right. I don't know. I assume you guys are... Can you um, zoom in on that screen? Use me, squirrel. Yeah. Let's... <laughs> So this may be an over zoom in initially, for which I apologize. We're just fine. Okay, so what I'm going to be showing is the the basic <laughs> function of oh my god, god squirrel, <laughs> <laughs> the basic function of the CosmoQuest Citizen Science projects, which is marking craters. This is not all that you well <laughs> working on it. Not all that goes on, but this is a very important part of it, which is the uh, mapping of craters on the moon on the asteroid Vesta and on Mercury. And so I'm going to pick the moon to start. Um, we just had a paper published uh, with the lead author, Stuart Robbins. In, in Icarus, which is an awesome journal. I'm stupidly proud. <laughs> so the Planetary Science Journal Icarus, which actually uh, shows, demonstrates statistically that you guys' results with the citizen science uh, is as good as the experts who have been doing it for decades and years and decades. Uh, but also gets the job done a lot faster. And <coughs> so I'm going to go ahead and show how that works. Um, when you go to CosmoQuest, uh, any place on the website, if you go to the menu that says Do Science, don't know if you guys can read that, um, you can choose from planet mappers, moon mappers, or asteroid mappers. I opened up moon mappers. And over on the side, simply craters and get started. Click button. All right, so it will have you log in if you are a user or register if you're not already a user because I use one of those fancy password saving programs. I already have that loaded. <clears throat> of course, I'm, I'm a bit terrified that my results aren't accurate because sometimes I'm just doing this in demo mode and making it up as I go along, which is always a fun time. Okay, so here you're presented with an image of, this, of the moon, of the surface of the moon taken with a lunar reconnaissance orbiter. We're equal now, so if they would just turn up the volumes. Okay. All right, so we're, we're at equal volume, so yay. <laughs> okay, um, and you have uh, a landscape covered in craters for the most part, but some other geological features as well. So what you're going to do, you're going to look at this image and say, okay, I see a crater here. This is a pretty obvious circular feature. Um, I'm going to make sure I've selected my mark crater tool, so clicking that, which is already pre-selected. And then I go and find the center of the crater. And there's a little, there's a little zoomy thing over in the corner, it's either in the right or left corner, depending on where you are in the image. There, zoomy thing, zoomy thing. Okay, <laughs> and that'll help you. Those crosshairs will help you find the exact center of that crater. So you want to click down and hold, and then drag your mouse or touchpad until that circle matches, the edge of that circle matches the rim or the edge of the crater. And that mark is your crater mark. It measures the position and the size of the crater. Now you want to keep doing that through the whole image. You don't have to get every tiny little crater. If you start drawing a circle, you'll notice it's red at some point. And if your crater size is like this little, here's a little tiny bitty one. If it's still red, when you reach the edge of the crater, you can let it go. Too tiny, we don't want it. Needs to be, I think, 18 pixels, 18 pixels in size at least. Um, you have a little bit of help if you have, if you're looking at a crater image and everything looks like bumps and you're not sure if it's craters or bumps or what's going on. Um, <clears throat> there is a little icon showing the direction from where the sun is coming. Uh, so that's over at the top right of this image right now. Um, now, as uh, Stuart, expl Stuart Roberts explained to me recently in a in a uh, broadcast, which will be available. Uh, 
as a as a bon as bonus content if you participate in our survey coming up soon. Um, the pictures that we've specifically chosen from the moon don't have the best sun angle. The sun is like right overhead. So the shadows aren't very deep. This is very difficult for a computer to automatically find, and it's even difficult for people to, to find. So this image, the craters aren't exactly sharp, but you can still use that sun to kind of help you out. And you want to go through now and mark as many of these craters as you can find. And there's quite a lot in this image, so I could actually spend some time doing that. Uh, one time when I do this is if I'm watching Cosmos on Sunday nights, <laughs> I will do this during the commercials because I don't normally watch TV on TV. I binge watch a lot of Netflix, so I'm not used to commercials. <laughs> it's kind of jarring for me, so it's like, oh, I'll do science. Yay. Um, there are additional features. It's really important to look for things that might be weird and aren't creators, and there's a mark feature tool for that as well. Um, so this is just a really light patch that may or may not be a crater. I'm not sure what's going on there, so I'm going to click on it with the mark feature tool. And it's bright, so I'm going to pick light albedo feature. If you don't know what all these terms are, that's okay. We have some explanations up in this red sidebar. The red sidebar above, <coughs> the red toolbar above, the, above that, the images is really helpful for frequently asked questions, for the tutorials. All of what I'm showing you here is part of our video tutorial, which you can go and look at at any time. The feature guide, which tells you uh, what you're looking at. So I'm going to open that in a new tab since that helps you identify what you're looking at. So here's the feature guide, and it goes through all those features. That's what a light albedo feature looks like. It's bright. That's what a dark albedo feature looks like. It's dark. And actually explains each thing. And then on the sidebar, so right now it's under the Hangoutathon, but usually it's at the top, um, we have all of those tutorials and frequently asked questions in science, all the extra material that helps you understand what you're actually doing when you do the mapping. So it's the mapping and it's the information all in one place. That all sounds awesome. And um, we're having way too much fun with cameras here. Yeah, you are. <laughs> I'm having fun with craters. So like these really faint ones are the difficult ones. Oh, you can't see anymore. No. These really faint <laughs> ones are the difficult ones, which uh, I, again, I have examples of it in the tutorial video, which Again, I, I do not have a background in planetary science. I am a radio astronomer by trade, but Stuart Robin, Robbins uh, sat down with me virtually and actually helped walk me through some of this so that I could do the tutorial videos. Uh, so I've kind of learned from him how to do the crater marking. You don't have to be an expert. That's the point of crowdsourcing is we have many people looking at the image. So even if you're a little bit off, a lot of people are worried, my results aren't good enough. That's totally not true. You, you're being included in the big database. and when combined together, this data is, is accurate. And it's not just about um, doing craters. There's a bunch of other features in there uh, to mark. And I'm, I'm going to let you, I'm going to hand this over to you. I know you hate it. Um, we're going to end up screen sharing um, some of some of the feature guides so that you can see what some of the other features are. But um, while while Nicole does that, um, we're both trying to use the same computer. Okay. What am I doing? Why did you give me this? I, I was going to have you pull up um, the the vocab cards. Okay. To talk about the other features that people can see, and you you've been keeping. Um, like you found the Doctor Who fissure? <laughs> I did. <laughs> oh, Vesta, there's totally a crack in the universe. Um, I also came upon the Apollo 15 lander <laughs> in one of the moon mappers' images. I was a little bit over track. It was insane. <laughs> um, and, and so while she's pulling those things up... I still don't know what you want me to do. <laughs> pull up Doctor Who's crater and, okay. and the... the um, but do you want me to screen share guide. into the hangout? Yes. That okay. That yes. that was the part I was I was unsure of. Sorry. Um, <laughs> okay. Tell me where to go. Trackpad. So, so okay. Yes. I'm gonna tell you where to go because I can't use this trackpad. Okay. I'm so so this. so the the Doctor Who fissure is on the blog. Okay. So I'm uh so from the blog if you search for Vesta that's probably. Is it on the main blog? It's on the main blog. Okay. I keep trying to subscribe instead of search. <laughs> so if you search for that, that was the part I was 
I don't want to hear myself. What? <laughs> <laughs> um, so we have make a little Vesta. Oh, there's go. probably a lot of Vesta. Put it um, put in Doctor Who. Okay, that's probably better. We, we blog about Vesta a lot. We don't blog about Doctor Who nearly as often, unfortunately. So so we found the. Apparently we do. Oh, because the forum for searches forums. the forum. Right. We do have a section on the forum for, for uh, small media lines. I'm just going to scroll back through time. Oh. So you want to tell them about the forum while I search for that? Sure. So the um, <clears throat> the, the CosmoQuest forum uh, last year merged, or was it last year or two years ago? Two years ago. Oh my gosh, ago. two years ago. Uh, merged and made lovely forum with the... The Bout Forum, the Bad Astronomy University Forum, which has its roots all the way back to early days of Bad Astronomy and the early days of Universe Today. And it all turned into one big conglomerated forum. So there's all kinds of discussions that go on there. People talk about astronomy, people talk about science, they talk about um, they talk about science in the news, they talk about controversies in science. Um, we have a, an amazing dedicated team of moderators who keep everyone in line and on topic and polite <laughs> for yes. the most part, if not like scary, scary internet time. Um, and uh, there's also some, uh, so I, I will admit, I enjoy hanging out in the off-topic babbling. I, I'll, I'll stop by there every once in a while <laughs> because it's, we do have a section specifically for off-topic things. There's also small, media at large, people talk about sci-fi, uh, all kinds of things like that. And so, um, you're almost there. I don't know. I don't know what you titled it. Crack in the Universe. There it is. Okay. It was a while ago. That's two months ago. Um, so that's the forum that we invite you to go and check out. Uh, there's also places where you can share your interesting mappers images of cool, funky stuff that you see, like uh, this, which I randomly came across while I was mapping Vesta. Uh, and if anyone is a Doctor Who fan, this is not a spoiler, but uh, oh yeah, there's the image down below. Uh, they do discover a crack in the universe. Turns out that crack is also in my ceiling and started leaking a couple oh, weeks no. ago. <laughs> That's a whole crack other story. The universe is leaking into your house. Yes, it is leaking rainwater into my house. But it also apparently exists on Vesta, and that uh, amused me uh, <laughs> as I was mapping Vesta. It's it's uh, completely irrelevant. Well, actually, it's not totally irrelevant. It's still an interesting feature that you can mark as unusual feature. I don't think we have a specific no. bridges one for this one. But you could still mark it as unusual feature, and that's something that the scientists might want to take a closer look at. And so we do have a whole variety of different things that you can look at um, to help you learn about well about all the different surface topologies. So we also, in addition to um, what are you looking for? I'm trying to find where the surface feature guide landed. Oh, it's part of the science pages, not the educator side. So this this and is each project has itself. Irene's. Oh, that's an explore now. Okay. <laughs> so so we're we're gonna hide so so we're we're announcing several things this weekend. Coming in a little while. For now, let me show you the Mercury. You show, you, yeah, show show the basic ones. It's under yeah. So we've rearranged some things in in the past week so that we can launch some new things today. I've been so busy planning this hangout a thon that she has no idea what I did to the site. It's no, great. <laughs> no, none whatsoever. No, no, but this we did this I did this I did months ago. No, this you did months ago, yeah. but we'll be featuring the other stuff later. Yes. So these are some of the other features that you can mark. Uh, this is Mercury, and we actually have different feature guides for each world. Mm -hmm. Because one of the crazy things about physics, which is awesome, is as you do things like move a planet right up next to the sun like Mercury, uh, hit it with uh, really big stuff that creates splatters, which happen to Mercury, and you change the physics and the planetary science involved because you have higher gravity, you have a different composition, all these little objects look slightly different. And so we have a different feature, feature guide for each world. And you can mark in our maps all of these different types of features. And we have different scientists interested in learning about all of these different things. Now, when you give to CosmoQuest, you 
are giving to help pay for Joe, to help pay for Tiny Intern, who's going to be here to do art projects with you in a moment. Um, and with us, we're going to play along, um, and you get to watch me and Nicole fail or not at art projects. Um, I will do a lot of failing. Yeah. So, so you're, you're also paying for us to potentially be able to do new citizen science projects. We have one that we're desperately dying to do with the National Radio Astronomy um, Observatory, which we've talked about before because this is Nicole's near and dear to her heart. Radio Astronomy and Citizen Science together is like my dream. <laughs> but as... <laughs> Goodbye, Yeti. <laughs> uh, as, as you know, um, or maybe you don't know, there, there's currently a funding shortage in the United States for science. Um, as, as it was recently described to me, word has come down from Congress that the space race is over, we have won, it's time to send the scientists home. This means that grant proposals from the National Science Foundation only allow people like me to ask for two months' salary. There's, at best, a one in eight chance of getting a grant. So if I have to put in eight grants for every two months of salary I earn, it takes me about two weeks to write each grant, and I'm a good grant writer. You can do the math. I'm too depressed to do the math. And, and so the expectation coming down from Congress is that people like me will spend nine months of a year teaching class. But if I'm spending nine months of a year doing nothing but teaching classes, there is no one left to manage CosmoQuest. And that, I think, would cause Nicole to cry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and, and so the fact that some of us are working on projects that are too big to restrict to two months a year worth of effort, it, 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 it isn't occurring to the people who are dictating the, the funding rules. And, and so when you give, you allow us to pay the salaries that otherwise we don't know how to pay and to do the citizen science projects that people want to do, that they want to do the science. Because another one of the side effects of not enough salary money is there's a lot of really awesome science that for the first time ever we have the capacity to do because of all the surveys going on. We have data coming out our ears but we don't have humans to process the data coming out our ears. Well, we do when we do citizen science, because we have all of you. You want to tell us about the radio project that we want to do if we get enough funding? There's a couple of different ideas that we've been floating around. One, is, <clears throat> one was uh, uh, with the Long Wavelength Array, we were talking about doing source finding uh, with a, an all-sky low-frequency radio observatory. Uh, we're still, we, we want to think do a pilot project to actually pit you guys against the sort of like the manverse machine, but to yeah. put you guys against the computer algorithms, which they are using to find really interesting transient sources. Transient meaning that it pops up out of nowhere. We're not sure what it is. It could be something like uh, neutron stars interacting, really high high energy physical astrophysical events. Uh, but <clears throat> with the uh, all the data coming down, we need someone, either computer or human, to look at it. A couple of other ideas we've been talking about with the National Radio Astronomy Observatory is. Uh, they're getting lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of spectra from the Green Bank Telescope at high radio frequencies. They're discovering molecular lines in spectra that need to be identified, and there are just hundreds upon hundreds of thousands of squiggly lines, <laughs> which definitely need someone to go through and, and, and look through them. Uh, this is going to inform the science being done with the Atacama Large Millimeter Array, a millimeter submillimeter array in Chile, which I visited last year, which is totally awesome uh, because that's going to that's really opening up the high frequency window. Um, I have all kinds of dream projects in my head. There, you know, I, I, I want people I want people to look at floppy jets, but that's just me. Um, <laughs> and do uh, interesting uh, morphology stuff. But anyway, uh, there's lots of different things that can be done with radio astronomy. Um, and with the very large, I'm, I'm now on a working group for the Very Large Array Sky Survey, which is going to be using the expanded capability of the Very Large Array to survey the entire sky. And there's going to be so much data coming from there that I know, I know there's going to be at least one, if not a few, citizen, potential citizen science projects coming out of that huge deluge of data that's going to come down. 
Um, so there's a, a lot of interesting ways which you can get involved in, in astronomy that's not optical visual astronomy like we're used to thinking of, which would be really cool. So that's kind of still what I'm, I'm dreaming about, um, getting some of these projects off the ground. But we need the, the money for the salaries to have the people that make the things like Corey and Joe. Who yeah. are also